and I would just go and go do my job. And she never complained about that. She never made any comments about it. It was, she knew kind of the priority for me was. I learned this the other day that there's only one sentence in the Bible about how you should choose a partner. Bruce Lawn. Chris Williamson. Yep, Chris Williamson. Okay, um, give me the little sound. I don't got the sound. <laughs> okay. Chris, oh. uh, hit it first, <laughs> and then I'm gonna do it. Hit it first, and then you go. Okay, Chris, you, you gonna hit it first? I'll do it. I'll do it, and then you. you. <laughs> uh, Chris Williamson does an incredible interview with Jocko, but when the topic of the Bible comes out, he strikes out. If you guys don't know who Chris Williamson is, he's actually one of my favorite podcasters believe it or not i haven't listened to a lot of his stuff but the stuff that i've listened to is amazing it's really good i was listening to his alex hermosi interview and then i get a dm of this clip on instagram and i said what is this what is this and so i thought you know what let me go back and hear it in context and make sure i get all of it and this is a beautiful conversation about marriage and family and fatherhood i was like yeah we need to have more of these conversations praise god and then and then the bible comes up and I was like, yo, this man said what? And shout out to Jocko for just rolling with the punches, man. I don't think Jocko is a person of faith, but he definitely just fought, like rolled with it. Okay, so let's pull that up, uh, Zach. Mm -hmm. um, so you got it at the family part? Yeah. It feels like a very different type of discipline. to the discipline to uh, put up with a baby that won't stop crying. It's the uh, discipline to be able to comfort somebody while you're away from them. Um, that, to me feels like a different sort of frequency of, of discipline. And uh, I'm interested in what you found as a challenge and what you found as uh, whether your military career had uh, prepared you for marriage and, and fatherhood effectively. Well, first of all, an uh, insane amount of credit goes to my wife, who is just, she. Uh, one of the things I've exp tried to explain to people about her is that she was emotionally independent, meaning she didn't need me to to bolster her up and w w she handled everything. She handled everything on the home front. Mm. Jago has been married 25 years, Navy SEAL, which by the way, this is a hard career. And a lot of these guys uh, don't stay married that long. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so the way he's describing his wife is, is, is really beautiful. Go ahead. Literally everything. And I would just go and go do my job. And she never complained about that. She never made any comments about it. It was, she knew kind of the priority for me was my job. And I told her that. And she said, yeah, I know. I get it. <clears throat> you take care of your team. You take care of your platoon. You take care of your task unit. And I got this. I got these kids and this house and all that other stuff. And she never complained. She never, she just, she just did it. And so the, the majority, the vast majority of credit goes to my wife for being an awesome human being, an awesome uh, mom to our kids. And I was in our time with the Navy SEALs, they talked about, man, how sometimes these dudes were on deployment for 10 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. This is not an easy life, man. And, and we take for granted how we got to this place as Americans to have a life this good. It's because of a guy, a bunch of guys like Jocko um, being away from their families, serving our country to make sure things stay with the status quo that we have here. And so it's not, this is not an easy life that he's gone through. This is not, this is not something that anyone could do. This is the, the elite of the elite of the elite. I think one of the dudes says that he said he was deployed for like, he was gone for, it was like 50 or 49 weeks of the year. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's nuts. I would love to give you some kind of, this is what you need to look for. And, and I, that's probably the best I could do, but I can't say that I looked for it. I got very, very lucky. I got very lucky that my wife was, look, you can judge her looks, and I obviously she was and is a beautiful woman, but the luck part was she was, like I said, emotionally independent. She was uh, strong to be able to handle just just mayhem, mayhem on a pretty regular basis. You know, not, you know from, from having a bunch of kids to I'm gone on deployment, and my wife is going to visit my wounded guys in the hospital or going to Sheesh. my guys' funerals. That's what she was doing. So, wow. you know, team effort for sure, but she's the MVP and I'm just sort of, you know, the, 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 bench, the bench warmer over here. This is something that uh, when he's describing his wife, uh, this reminds me of Monette. 
like she just kind of held it down as we were trying to figure out how to be entrepreneurs and mm. financially figure it out like she just kind of rocked out man and so i relate to a lot of a lot of what he's saying in terms of her temperament and all that kind of stuff uh because my, my wife is very similar now all that being said the the you know from the military look taking ownership of things which which i already talked about a little bit but mm. there's nothing really that goes on in my family that i don't that, that i would say no to my wife no that's your fault because i can just about guarantee that everything is my fault this is something that we talk about in Christian circles. Not everything is necessarily your fault. He says it's everything's fault, but I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it like this. Not everything's your fault, but everything is your responsibility. Mm. Headship, everything's your responsibility. If you're the head of the house, everything's your responsibility. You may, I may not be at fault for something stupid my kids do or something that happened, but it's all under my household. It's all my responsibility. And so his worldview is reflective of this idea of just hyper responsibility everything is ultimately my responsibility that happens to me and if you know if, if things go bad it's it's all good if things don't go and so this is this is very ephesians 5 this is very like the man is the head you know what i mean yeah um which I, which i think is a very uh, good point that he makes here that i don't think we talk about enough like if, if more men viewed everything that went down in their household as their responsibility maybe not your fault but as your responsibility Everything. I'm talking everything. Finances, health, sex life, everything. If you view that, if you view that, you would you would be much better off than playing victim and saying, well, my, my wife doesn't put out anymore. <laughs> she had babies and it's hard. She put on some pounds. Like all that whining doesn't doesn't do anything for you. Hey, you want to see something crazy? 67% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. Do me a quick favor, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all the videos here on the Bless God Studios channel. When, when there's something that's not right, when there's something going wrong, it, it's something that I, it's a mistake that I made. I did something wrong. De-escalation, right? Mm -hmm. Because my wife, while borderline saint, there, you know, she's a human being. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends would argue that she's just a saint, but she is a human being. And, you know, she might get mad about something. She might get frustrated with me about something. And being able to de-escalate de those situations and this man talking about marriage like he got a hostage situation <laughs> overseas he's like we got to de-escalate the situation hey but but, he, but he's spitting facts though he like is, you yeah. got to know how to de-escalate in, in, a, in a marriage mm -hmm. uh, not escalate them is very very beneficial and one of the best ways to do that is by taking ownership when something goes wrong i would say the de-escalation part taking ownership is definitely beneficial if you're blaming your your wife you're probably that's not going to work out great and, and just the idea of, you know, trying to win, trying to win mm. an argument. Yep. I mean, first of all, honestly, I don't really, ar I, I, I don't really argue with my wife. I probably yep. have been in less than a handful, less than three or four arguments in my life with my wife. That's amazing. That's great. I don't think I've, I've, I've probably like maybe, maybe, maybe five. I can't really remember of a time we've yelled at each other. Oh yeah. That's you like, know. that's normal, right? Yeah, I, I would. No, no, it's not normal <laughs> to yell at each other. No, no, I'm saying to not yell at each oh, other. Oh, to not yell at each other. I would, I would say it should be normal. Yeah, it should be normal. I don't know if it is normal, yeah. but, but I feel like you gotta work through your, your stuff before mm -hmm. you get married. Like if you, if you don't have enough emotional capacity to like hear something difficult yep. or hear something you utterly disagree with, yep. which you will in marriage, and not yell, yep. then you're not ready. Yep. And and I can't even, I can't even really think of any right now. I just don't want to, you know try and try and make myself out to, or make our relationship out to be something that's not but we don't really argue very often and so i, I can't even really say that hey don't try and win an argument with your wife because i'm not really having an argument with my wife i guess my i guess my synopsis of this is pay attention to who you're going to get married to and <laughs> try and pick someone that is emotionally independent that has their own has their own that, that can handle life by themselves mm -hmm. and that that can be that can make some people feel insecure right like I want someone that's relying on me right. all the time right. and I want them to feel like they need me and that, that might be a trap for you. Because mm. the guys feel threatened by that. A woman that can have her own friends and her own things. My wife does the things that her, she serves with kids and KKPC. She does things that are like her own things. She does things on her own and, and it's, it's, I think it's healthy. If that's what you set yourself up with. So that's what I do. Find someone that's emotionally independent. Find someone that you get along well with. Find someone that's that's calm yeah you know someone that's not you know that's not going to get get bent out of shape about little things and if they do a little de-escalation can kind of get the problem solved and then just uh have fun you know my wife and i have fun and i think that's important it's very interesting to think about the fact that 
some people rely on a partner who is overly vulnerable uh, or um, overly anxiously attached as a way to bolster their own sense of reassurance in a relationship. I've, I've seen this quite a lot. Yeah, that's probably not going to be a great move. And look, you, a person, I, I don't know everyone. All I can do is talk for myself. And I would recommend you find someone that's more your equal, someone that you can engage with, someone, that's, someone that you're part of a team with rather than someone that you're sort of domineering over. Yeah. I learned this the other day that there's only one sentence in the Bible about how you should choose a partner. Hold on, pause, pause, should... blah, 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 blah. First of all, he said there's only one sentence in the Bible about how you should choose a partner. There's only one sentence in the Bible about how to choose a partner. Now, is that true? Uh, no, absolutely not. And it says that you should choose someone that you could go to war with. Mm. I like it. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, there's not just one sentence in the Bible about how you should choose a partner. Not to mention, it's definitely not that <laughs> someone you should go to war with. There's actually quite a lot in there <laughs> about choosing partners. There's like a lot. What it actually says is that sol soldiers who are newlyweds shouldn't be going yeah. to war. They should take a year off from serving. When a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out with the army nor be charged with any duty. He shall be free at home one year and shall give happiness to his wife whom he has taken. So you should get a wife that helps you not go to war. You should get a wife that, yeah, that that in, in their biblical times, when folks got married, they got time off. Yeah. You know? So this idea that you should you should find a partner that you should that that, that you can go to war. This, this is what happens, and Chris, I'm not I'm not trying to dunk on you, but this is what happens <laughs> when people are super smart, not this Chris, super oh, smart like, Whoa. and super like effective at one thing, and then they think they can like by proxy know a bunch of things. You don't know a bunch of things. You know what you know, right? Like this guy Chris Williamson was a nightclub promoter. Like now I've thrown a handful of rap shows, but I can't just flippantly talk outside of my butt about what it's like to be a nightclub promoter because I've thrown a couple rap shows. Yeah. They're not the same thing. I'm not talking about the the things you're an expert in. Don't try to sound like you're an expert in the Bible and then say something that's just not in the Bible. This link says, what what does the Bible say about choosing a mate? I mean, there are <laughs> a lot of verses. I mean, not just one sentence. He didn't even say one verse. He said <laughs> one sentence. Now go back, go back to the video, and let's see if if there's anything. And and, and shout out to Jocko, who's just rolling with it. He's yeah. like, yeah, that sounds Play good, it. I guess. That that works. That That's works. <laughs> That's legit. it's a team effort, a relationship, right? <laughs> and hey, yo, he gets away with it because he has the British accent. Yeah, and he talks slow. He talks slow. He got really good camera work. Cadence, it his... looks amazing. But people will believe this, and they turn this into a short. Someone turned this into a short. Without no one checking. thought to verify. <laughs> Is this really in the Bible? It's not. Particularly vulnerable teammate, because you're always going to be the person that's out in front. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Now to push back a little <laughs> bit about that. Look, you, 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 there's guys I would be number one on my list to go to war with that probably are not going to be the best spouses in the you world. You wouldn't get in a relationship with them. <laughs> they're they're going to be they're gonna be tough for, for Yo! a female to be married to. When Jocko got, got pushing back against out-of-context Bible verses, amazing. He's like, I know guys that are specifically good at their job because they're so ruthless, they're fine with killing lots of people. <laughs> they, they would have a hard time adjusting to domesticated family life. Because <laughs> they're, they're wild, right? They're wild animals, and they're the exact <laughs> type of person that you would want to go to war with and yeah. gone to war with. And a lot of times, they're, they're, they're not going to be great spouses as, as yeah. husbands. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Jocko, yep, you nailed it, bud. We don't want to be able wow. to go to war with our spouse. We want our spouse to make sense of the world outside that feels like a war in our home. That's yeah. what you want. You don't want to be able to go to war with your spouse. So anyway, man, shout out to Chris. Tap in, bro. Tap in. We, let me do some Bible study. Proverbs together, 31 man. woman. Yeah. Able to handle stress under gunfire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just all the things I had on my checklist when I was bro. getting married. Yeah, that's amazing. Anyway, moral of the story, don't talk about stuff that you're not an expert in. Okay? Stick to your lane. Do the things you're great at. Chris is great at a lot of things. 
don't 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 come up with these uh fast and the furious type bible uh full form entities that aren't in the bible all right Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month, where you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us conceptualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. The perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right?